Yes. You know about the retrograde ejaculation thing, right? No. Well, this is crazy. So the, um, and I have a story that you have to be careful with this. Okay, foundational things. Get more, get sunlight in your eyes in the morning, especially on cloudy days, as many days of your life as you can. Yep. And make it a pleasurable thing. Yeah. Right? Just get up and get outside, get out on a porch, get outside, you know, take sunglasses, just do it, right? Um, uh, most days, if not every day. Try and get your sleep right. Now, younger people with different schedules, like don't give up a social life, but you know, try and get a good amount of sleep. Three days a week of weight training, we're talking about 10 minutes of warm up and 50 to 60 minutes of working out. And train your legs, guys, come on. Hmm. You know, like, have, like, come on. Three days a week of some cardiovascular work. People might say, well, listen, I'm in my 20s or 30s. Like, I'm not worried about it. It's not about being worried about a heart attack. It's about maintaining blood flow to everything. What is some cardiovascular work? Okay, so I think one day a week, you take a long, slow jog or pedal on the bike or treadmill or swim, whatever your favorite thing is. If you want to make it social and you're out with somebody, you could literally get one, like wear a weight vest for a hike if you want to make it harder. But um, you could skip rope, whatever. The other cardio day, sprint. It's real easy, find a patch of land, sprint for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, then walk back for a minute to 90 seconds, sprint again, do that five to 10 times. Till, by, by the end, you will have increased your speed, your VO2 max, your output. And then one day a week, just take off as a recovery day. And it, listen, there are reasons to do it for aesthetic reasons, there are reasons to do it for heart health reasons. This is key. Have some tool to be able to control your stress. Some people are super mellow, but some non-pharmaceutical tool the double inhale through the nose, the physiological size, so big deep inhale through the nose, then sneak in a little bit more air, then dump all your air with your mouth. That's the fastest way to calm down. If you're scared of public speaking, if you, um, you know, you're tense about some interaction, and listen, if I can't bring you on board with that way, um, let's, I'll just be very direct. You want to delay orgasm. It works for that too, because remember, orgasm is a increase in the what we call the sympathetic tone of the nervous system. It's actually kind of like the stress response, and then comes the relaxation afterwards. So you know, sort of like if you need like a, a re an incentive for real. Well, and in the tantric community, they talk about using this type of breathing to, to for couples to be able to have sex for long periods of time to be able to explore the different forms of of sensual connection. So there you go. You know about the retrograde ejaculation thing, right? No. Well, this is crazy. So the, um, and I have a story that you have to be careful with this, uh, not to get too wild with this. So there is this thing about, um, there's a lot on the internet about semen retention and chi, right? Yeah. You know, after orgasm, in, here we're talking about males and females, but for in males after ejaculation, there's an increase in the hormone prolactin, which makes you very mellow. And that sets the refractory period. And during that time, you're not getting another erection, you're not having sex again. Mm -hmm. This is why drugs that increase dopamine sometimes are, are kind of pro-sexual drugs. Mm -hmm. But if people take too much of them, then they're just like all gas pedal, but they're not relaxed enough to actually get an erection, mm -hmm. right? This is the cocaine thing, right? Mm -hmm. So, the, you know, sex is a dance between arousal and relaxation. Right. Tantra, under, excuse me, understands that, and they try and bring people into a kind of a mellow plane where they are controlling all that, that rise and fall of, of arousal mm -hmm. over and over again, that's the idea. So, there is this notion of ret in the from in Asian certain Asian cultures have talked about retaining chi by instead of allowing semen to leave the body during orgasm, they there's a practice of pulling it back in by inhaling and, and clamping essentially the muscles around the prostate. So I have a friend who got really into experimenting with this. His wife um, it happened to be in the kind of Qigong community, uh, was really in, you know, into Qigong, and he did this, but he developed terrible prostitutes. So you have to be really careful. But he was walking around feeling like he had twice as much energy as he ever did before. So right before he's about to bust, he sucks it back in. Yeah, and again, you can mess yourself up with this, you know? Like, That's crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy. I'm not, pr I'm not promoting this, but there is this notion of retrograde ejaculation. When you when you retrograde, do you ever actually ejaculate? They do. They recommend they do it like a, you know like once a week or something like that. We've got sunlight, exercise, stress control through physiological. The double inhale, long exhale through the mouth. Um, try and be a nose breather and not a mouth breather. Um, listen, I also think it's a really good idea. In addition to seeking good social connection, etc., I think it's good to have some practice that makes you more resilient. And I'm a big fan of cold showers and ice baths and cold. They have great banyas here in New York. Yeah. And uh, um, you know, put yourself into uncomfortable cold 
three or five days a week. It's not about the metabolism increase as much as is the mental training of doing something that sucks. I mean, David Goggins has this right. And actually this brings us back to this, the, the, the importance of story. I mean, David is a guy who just keeps pushing himself and pushing himself to do the hard thing. But I think the reason he's so effective as a communicator is because we understand that he had to go through a journey that was incredible from being this 300 plus pound guy to that and he's still doing it. So we're like in his story, he's mm. still going. And so I think all of us would do well to, yeah, to push ourselves to be uncomfortable. And then with the cold, what's beautiful is after you get out of the cold, and I like to end on warm shower, you do a minute or three minutes of a cold or get in the ice bath or whatever it is, you get this huge long lasting surge in dopamine that sets your mood and your positivity for hours and hours. This has been shown by data. Wow. And so I think it's a wonderful tool and it's, listen, these are basically zero cost tools. They take time. Yeah. I wish I had developed these tools in my twenties. Yeah. I built them gradually. I've been working out a long time and little things here and there, but if you start them early, yeah. they stay with you. And I always think the best way to outperform everybody in your business, or at least keep up in very competitive business, and Joe Rogan is a beautiful example of this, is to take excellent care of your health. People who are really good at their craft yeah. invest in taking really good care of themselves. Yeah. And then, of course, that includes avoid toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. Just avoid them. They ruin people's lives. They'll ruin your life. Like, just do your best to be in healthy relationships and then everything's good. And I don't say that lightly. Like, that's a big one. Mm -hmm. I've seen so many people who were doing great, but because they got caught up in some drama, they just nosedive the whole thing. So those, those would be the recommendations. There are a bunch of others and I'll keep spouting them out on the internet.